Hello everyone, and welcome back to 4Science and Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access, where I continue to work on the Starlight to go to the next location in the Curb Wide Tour, and we need to replace the Whiplash. The Whiplash is great and all, but it's really only great for past Mach 1, and we're not getting there. So, I think we need uh, Weasley. I, I'm not sure that's great. We might have been saved partly by the gimbal range, the vectoring range of the whiplash last time as far as control is concerned. That's always helpful. It's hard to say sometimes whether... But, but I feel like the center mass should be pretty close to the center of thrust when the Weasley's on, so I don't think that should be the case. But it's something to worry about. So we're putting Weasley on, but the Weasley is 0.3 tons less than the whiplash. So we need uh, 0.2, uh, sorry, 0.3 more in the back here somehow. Now right now, I've emptied these tanks. Uh, well, of course the oxidizer we're not going to have, but the methane in that tank too. So it's just the two main tanks here that we're reading. And we want to get the center of mass right between them. I, we had a problem where the center of mass was going too far forward and we were getting nose heavy. I don't want that to happen. So uh, we're using that as a reference. Now, we could have extra fuel, uh, that's an option, and the dry mass of the tanks of that extra fuel would be the 0.3 tons. So uh, something like two of these would work, uh, or well, more of those, uh, but let's see, if the, we were talking about the methane tanks, these are too small and these are actually too big. So because these have 0.25 tons apiece, and then we can only have one, and then it looks like that. <laughs> so, uh, we would actually like something in the middle of those two. Hmm. But uh, another option I was thinking of was maybe having this whittle. But I don't think we need the whittle, and it's got less efficiency than the Weasley. So, we wouldn't want to have it on anyway. So these are the problems that we have. Uh, I'm trying to find the mass that we could use to basically counterbalance the cockpit. Or we could just omit the controller up front. I guess we could just omit... I mean, if we take off the point uh, two five tons here... That should get us closer. doesn't look super closer, but um, it, in theory gets us closer. Now I want to turn this off for a sec so that whatever changes we make, we make sure that the center of thrust still goes through the center of mass well enough. Still feel like we need something more in the back. Maybe I should put the controller in the back. We, we, we don't need the controller if we have a Kerbal on board, and we will have a Kerbal on board, so... Air brakes? I mean, that's one thing we could just have. But they're not very heavy. They're uh, 0 0.04 tons a piece, but that's something. Now they don't clip, but in theory, having them right behind the vertical stabilizers isn't good. Um, but I don't think Kerbal's going to care too much about that. Now it looks marginally fancier. Well, still I feel this isn't perfect, but I think we're going to go with it. It's about the same as it was on our last flight, so I think we can accept that. And I'm going to fill this up again. Now it's sort of like that, but we're not going to take off with it vertically, so that should be fine. And anyway, these have vectoring, so think they can deal with that kind of difference. I hope. <laughs> uh, we should just keep in mind that we've sort of arranged it with those empty in mind and equal fuel in these two tanks and hopefully that'll be okay. So this is banking on the extra efficiency of the Weasley. But is that enough? Oh, so we've lightened things up a bit. But we could use some drop tanks. Now that we're lighter. 
Oh, they have four tons of methane. That's a lot, actually. Maybe a single one central line is better then. Wow. I don't know. It's probably going to be scraping the ground like that, though. Having an extra ton of tanks as tip tanks might be a better idea. I, when the wheels compress here, I feel like these this will be scraping the ground and prevent us from taking off. Putting them on the wings might be better, but I don't think I want to carry four tons of extra fuel. Not four tons, eight tons of extra fuel, sorry. Fuel crossfeed enabled. Hopefully that works, works. Well, why does this one have to be rotated differently? Oh, uh, well, I'm not gonna fix that. That's just a fiddly thing. We're working on the major design here. So, 0.25, so that's an extra 1.5 tons of methane that we have on the tip tanks. And I'll have to make sure to move them around as necessary. Who's going to be the Kerbal? Oh, two tried to sneak in. I'm alright with Desmi trying that. Alright, Desmi Kermit it is. Okay, actually, we don't want these on. We're going to do a normal, conventional takeoff. Uh, I'm gonna stage them. It's a bit heavy right now. About 100 meters per second. Don't stall. It's a little bit tail heavy right now. So once we get through 1.5 tons of the fuel, we know we have to transfer it. And I'll just be, oh, a little bit of deviation there. That'll just be extra room for us. It's not really accelerating great. I think the Weasley's a little bit underpowered compared to what I was expecting. It can't be tallying it up correctly here, because to take 4 tons, 4 tons, and 6, 2.5 tons, that's 9.5 tons of methane right there, and it's only got 9.23 tons. I don't honestly know what 9.23 tons it's got there. Oh, because the other decoupler isn't... Oh, it didn't symmetrize the fuel crossfeed, that's why. Okay, now we've got it. So watch out, fuel crossfeed does not get symmetrized apparently. I don't know, I'm not liking the Weasley too much. Our flight envelope is really tight, meaning that you know our stall speed is like a hundred meters per second, and I can't go too much faster than that, so it's a bit of a problem. Well, it doesn't have an afterburner, that's for sure. Well, I wouldn't recommend this design to anybody who's lacking in patience, that's for sure. I'm trying to coax it to higher speeds here. Uh, here it's climbing, but then it's losing speed again, so... Just... Until we drop the tip tanks, we're probably not going to be able to do much. Hopefully, dropping the tip tanks will help. So apparently a uh, patch is coming up soon on January 30th and I'll fix actually the more egregious bugs that we've noticed so seems like a pretty good deal. No new content of course so it was just bug fix patch but I did note the fixing the orbital decay thing again. <laughs> I keep promising that they fixed it but it's a very persistent thing apparently. We've seen it in this series too. Well, we're currently down here. Still a long way to go, though. Really hoping we can go faster. I'm tempted to, like, use these to keep us going up and nose down, like a helicopter, sort of. But this seems like it would be very inefficient. I'm desperate for speed somehow. But, on the bright side, we still haven't started using our internal fuel yet, so fuel-wise we're good, it's just that it's really tedious. 
Maybe it has some sweet speed that will get it to be super efficient or something. I'm diving, I'm trying to go faster. Let's try to get to 200 meters per second or something. I mean, we're still on the tip tank fuel, so... I don't mind wasting it a little bit if we can go faster right now. But we're not really managing that very well. Also, the sun is setting on me. I started off late. And if I can't go any faster, <laughs> we're gonna end up landing in the dark. We need to go a certain speed in order to make sure that we get there in daylight. Otherwise, the world will rotate. Well, at this speed, this is going to be a very long journey, so apologies that this is probably going to be a short episode for you, as was a long episode for me. Okay, I think the tip tanks are all clear. Alright, jettisoning the tip tanks. Well, we're in some sort of cloud, I guess. Off they go. Gotta try and climb. I'm not feeling a whole lot of extra power right now. It's rough being so low, but I can't coax it too much higher. <laughs> it's a little bit slow. We're only now on internal fuel, but you know we've covered maybe a third of the trip. So efficiency-wise, again, fine. Sunlight-wise, quite a lot of trouble. Of course, this would be a lot easier if I just made it bigger. I could use the Mark III cockpit, use... I think we could just slap the swerve on and everything, and probably we could have a rocket plane. And it'd be better off. Like, many, many jets. I'm trying to be very small here. But scaling up has its benefits. Ah, uh, sunlight. Don't go away. Shoot. <laughs> Shoot. I mean, I'm used to longer trips than this in flight sim, so it's okay and everything. Just sort of wasn't expecting it here. Darn Weasley. <laughs> oh, I knew I needed more than one. <laughs> or more engine power. We could probably have slapped the other engines right here instead of these nose cones. Turns out we might not have needed the extra efficiency after all. It was efficient enough. We're too darn efficient. Maybe a different intake combo would have been good. Gotta try my best to climb in the hope that there's some nice altitude. I'm gonna empty the two tanks on the tail so that we go back to the main tank only configuration. So yeah, we've reached the edge of the continent, the beach where I did my emergency landing at. And we still got a lot of fuel. We've got fuel like we could make it back kind of fuel. All I need right now is like some sudden mesa and I smack into the side of it. That'd be great. Well, let's sort of see some clouds, I think. But staring into night, sometimes you sort of see illusory, illusory things. One of the problems with flying at night. That, that's a cloud, right? <laughs> Not a mountain. <laughs> you can see something there. Oh, I'm going over it. That, that was probably a cloud. Gosh, the one thing this plane didn't need was air brakes. <laughs> anyway. I don't suppose this star thingy, whatever it is, that we're going towards has lights. That would be nice. 
Maybe it's an observatory, you know. Well, they probably don't want light pollution then. Oh, we've got a uh, marker. Stargazer Point. Well, it sounds like an observatory, doesn't it? But what is this line that I see here? Is that a cloud or is that the actual terrain? I don't feel like I have any choice but to try and go above it. But the point is definitely down there, so that suggests that this is all cloud. Which isn't going to make landing any easier. Okay. Well, I can't see anything. <laughs> okay, I think I should, while I have altitude, switch into VTOL mode. We've got plenty of fuel. So, let me just thrust limit the Weasley. I didn't thrust limit it all the way just yet. I'm just gonna get the landing gear out right now. I don't think any part in this flight were we going so fast that that would have been a problem. I feel like there's a lot of hills around. <laughs> now remember, if you're going too slow, you're not gonna have any air over your control surfaces. Okay, well, it's a pretty big monument. I'm not using the afterburner mode. We're light enough, I think we don't need to. Circling around it. Uh, it's really tough in the dark. Fudge. Oh, okay, we wrecked it, we wrecked it. Oh, we're here. <laughs> we wrecked it. Did we get, did we lose the, we lost the Mark 1 lander can, didn't we? Yep, we lost the Mark 1 lander can again. Hopefully the Kerbal's hatch isn't obstructed. Uh-oh, EVA is disa disabled due to obstruction. No. Come on. Um... Uh-oh. Um, we have a problem. Okay, these are probably not the ones we want to use. Not I, Actually, none of them are the ones we want to use, but... Um, we will try... We will try moving forward somewhat. Oh, we don't have that. Oh, right. The, we lost the Weasley. Are we in the vicinity, though? <laughs> Run uh, Kerbin, Kerbin Mountains. We are not... We are not in the vicinity. Oh, I'm in... I did it in Fizz Warp again. No. Afterburner mode. Apparently three degrees of vectoring are not enough. Well, I don't know, I think this is a bust. Let me go to a tracking station and come back and hope it hops. <laughs> this seat can EVA. No, um... Okay, well, I mean, it'd be a good place for a VTOL landing if it was in daylight. And I could see the terrain around. I'm try and rock more. Oh! We're turning! We're turning! Come on! Oh. Come on! Reaction wheel, you know you wanna. 
I swear what we need to do is break like basically anything off. Oh, come on, slide. Yes, the <laughs> slide. I don't know if it'd do any good, but... I blame that air brake for obstructing us, really. But it's probably the ground. It's probably not the air brake. Deploy. Oh, it can still deploy like that. Oh, gosh. Come on. Uh, it could have knocked us, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. That was a bit handy. No. Okay, well, this long mission was a bust. Um, so, the Weasley option, not a great option. I think... Uh, well, I mean, I was about to say I think I should try something large with overwhelming force, but there's not actually that much room to land in. So, probably something small is not a bad idea. But we clearly had too much fuel for this. So, we can sacrifice some of our fuel in exchange for speed, I think. Two Weasleys? I mean... Should I stick to Weasleys? Maybe I should just stick a Panther at the back. It's got the 9,000, you know, it's got the cruise mode for 9,000 and then the 4,000 for... for afterburning mode. Sort of best of the both best of both worlds, really. We should have just gone Panther all the way. Alright, well anyway, with this upside down, I'm going to recover it. I don't think I can salvage the situation at all. And I'm gonna have to leave it here. It was a long flight, but unfortunately while we got close, we didn't quite manage it because we toppled over. So <laughs> With that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.